Uh, hello, I'm, I'm Dr. Marin Sibiak. Uh, I'm your overall data guy. Uh, for the last 15 years, I, I, I worked in data science, even before it was a fancy buzzword. Um, I believe personally in uh, delivering value from data and understanding the data and scientific method in data. And this is approach that led us actually to, to data mesh. We did different bits and bobs uh, of data mesh. Then uh, one and only Jamak Dagani described the data mesh and we had this aha moment, yes, it actually connects all the dots. And we decided that we will write a book about the practicalities because in our consultancy, uh, data science consultancy, but also um, strategic management and process um, consultancy, we encountered many of the things that are described there. So we will talk about what data mesh is and is not. Uh, we will talk about the four principles of data mesh and the, let's say, some practical aspects of it. And uh, I will also tell you about kickstarting data mesh in one month. Uh, all this content is taken from the Data Mesh in Action book published by Manning, uh, available on Amazon. So let's start. Uh, I would like to start with, with, with the mm, sentence that I used to say when data mesh became really popular, that the silver bullets aren't. Uh, the same as data science was as advertised, was not the single solution to all the business problems. The same data mesh is data mesh is not. Uh, it's I'm, I love this approach. However, it's not for, for everyone and it's not a purely technical solution. Data mesh is the decentralization paradigm in our view, and it's a socio-technological architecture. Uh, it sounds pretty complicated and uh, rightfully so, because unfortunately it is. If you want to uh, implement data mesh, you need to think carefully if it's good for you, uh, because from our experience, where data mesh really shines and really adds value, it's when there are set of conditions met. Uh, one is that there is a complex data needs, uh, meaning that people who use data, they use it in multiple different um, ways. Uh, when the data sources are diverse and there is a lot of different data sources, and when there is a high socio-technical complexity, meaning there are a lot of different teams, uh, data teams, uh, software development teams, uh, and, and, and business teams. If it sounds like a big corporation to you and not like, uh, you know, G uh, Joe and Jane uh, working in a garage, well, in our experience for smaller companies and companies with the simple, you know, data needs with uh, pretty uh, limited number of data sources, data mesh may not be the best solution. Uh, so the first thing that you need to know about the data mesh it may not be for you. Now, let's talk about what it is and you will be able to decide if it's really good for you or not. So uh, maybe you have parts of data mesh in, in your um, company and uh, you don't even know it. And then if you will want to transfer to fully blown data mesh everybody's talking about, then you will need just to do a couple of adjustments, not build it from the scratch. Uh, one thing that I would like to, to mention here, and I will mention it again, mm -hmm. Zamak Dagani, during the panel a couple hours ago, uh, she said that she believes that the data mesh is well introduced in thin slices. So these are the pillars of data mesh, and the pillars of data mesh shouldn't be considered it as little data meshes. Uh, you should take a little from each one. Uh, so we'll start with domain ownership. And I know that this is a bit of a problematic one because it requires a lot of cooperation between uh, data and uh, business worlds. Uh, but the main idea behind it is that you need to understand the business domain, where business domain is a very nebulous thing, I would say. But it's not, uh, there is no very strict definition. Uh, there is, of course, uh, domain driven design and methods of. Uh, showing uh, or, or, or um, discovering pro uh, domain boundaries and setting up boundaries of, of domains. Uh, but 
it's just a bit of business that is doing a certain thing. They usually have a single data model, but it's important that data mesh needs to be embedded into business operations. It shouldn't be uh, a solution where you throw a little bit from this business part, a little bit from that business side. Uh, part of what we do and what we learned painfully uh, is that if you want to connect data people with business people, it's good when at least business people have the same understanding of the business, of the processes within the data. I will talk about it more when I will be talking about uh, building an MVP. Uh, anyway, uh, it's important to know that data should be owned where it's being generated, as close to source as possible, because otherwise, if you have a central team which collects the data from multiple different domains, there is no possible way that they will understand it well, that they will describe it well, uh, that this data will be uh, available for everyone described as well as if it's described at the source of uh, at the source where it's uh, being produced and by the people who live and breathe this data. The second principle is treating data as a product. Uh, when we were um, working on different types of uh, and elements of data mesh previously, before Jamak described it in a, in a concise way, uh, we were using a lot of knowledge from product design uh, when we were talking to people how they should present the data to others. And uh, it applies here. Um, data should be well described, it should have the information, like any product, what it actually is. Uh, it should have rich metadata description. It should be available in this form or another, uh, meaning that it needs to be possible for people to get this product and use it as they see fit or we will talk about it in a second, uh, how they're allowed to, 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 to do it. Uh, but it needs to be packaged neatly and it needs to be described and made available. Uh, the next pillar, so the, the first pillar is that you need to have data which relates to a single business domain, meaning some area of, of, of concise business operations. Now, if you have this data and you have people in the uh, both technical and data and business people working together, they describe this data and they prepare a one need package, uh, which can be shared with, with others. Now, we go to uh, moment where someone needs to decide if this data can be shared freely, what are the access rights. Uh, here we come to uh, federated computational governance, uh, which means uh, that there should be two levels or layers of, of governance. One is central, where there are strategic decisions and, and uh, policies uh, and standards defined, um, where there is someone with the view on all of the data and knowledge and support of people who know, I don't know, all the legal aspects uh, of the security, cybersecurity aspects, uh, people who can set up the standards in such a way that the whole, the company as a whole and its IT and data environment is safe and sound. Uh, but there should be a lot of operational freedom uh, left within domains uh, where people can decide for themselves how they want to uh, describe this da da uh, data, not meaning that they can describe it as they want, uh, that they will use their own field names, like, you know, instead, uh, instead of time, they, would, they will call it, I don't know, space. Uh, but they need to be able to choose some tooling that they will use, uh, they will decide on the data model that best fits the business. And this is the, 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 the critical factor. Within the domain, they will understand how this data best suits and describes the business that they do. And then they, when they describe it, they need to uh, adhere to standards of description that are set up uh, centrally. Now, the fun thing about uh, federated computational governance is that uh, there is no a silver bullet solution again. Uh, it's very case by case and working with uh, different 
companies, we learned that different functions shifted from uh, central to local uh, governance units, so to do the Uh, set up however by no means it's uh, uh, something which is which is which is uh, bounding anyone so now we have data uh, we have a business domain we have people from data and uh, business worlds working together to describe the data they decide on how they would like to expose pieces of this data to the rest of the company and there is a governance which tells them how this should be done in a way that different data products are comparable or, or, or connectable between each other. Now, to connect these different data products, there is needed something which is called the self-serve data platform, which is the place where different data products can be connected to, so they can be found from where they can be accessed and where someone can uh, it's the way to also to ensure that the policies are automatically um, enforced because in the in the previous slide we had this federated computational governance i said something about federated but the computational means that the execution of these policies should be enabled by this self-serve data platform so data mesh in this view becomes a part where you have a domain or, or multiple domains, uh, meaning different um, parts of businesses. Within the, each domain, you have business and, and uh, data people working together to prepare these data products, meaning uh, the data structure or, or, or data set, which is exposed for other people to be uh, to, to use. There are centrally sen uh, set standards for how this data should be described so it's findable. And finally, we have self-serve data platform, meaning a technical solution, which is um, enabling this findability, accessibility, and policy enforcement. Uh, so uh, if you would like to, 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 to build a data mesh uh, for, for yourself, uh, as I said, it's a pretty complicated thing. It's not even for everyone. You should evaluate if this solution is right for you. Uh, to do that, uh, we propose going through a series of steps. Uh, first, you should draw a landscape um, diagram. You should understand what systems and um, business operations are within your company that you or um, if you are working on a single business unit anyway. You should draw a system landscape diagram. I will in a second show how we go about uh, all of the steps. You should analyze who are your stakeholders. Uh, you should be able to choose the right people, set up minimal governance, data products, and data platform. Uh, so the way we approach uh, drawing a system landscape um, is mapping out the business processes, mapping out what data could be used to drive or inform decisions within this landscape map and finally what are the risks associated with uh, making these decisions um, the way they that you will um, try to to to, to um, draw the landscape map is uh, it may be multiple different ways so now that you know the systems you should think who are your stakeholders uh, we propose using this interest and power uh, chart. So thinking about who do you want to invite to your, uh, I don't know, cooperation or central governance uh, for us. And we really encourage you to invite not only your friends and family and enthusiasts, but think about uh, inviting, I don't know, saboteurs, uh, people who have high power, high interest, but then not really your friends uh, for two reasons one you know keep your enemies uh, friends close and enemies even closer the second they might have they may be right their uh, 
distance or skepticism might be well justified. They can help you evaluate this solution. And also, if you show that their worries are not uh, justified, you will have another great friend. Uh, remember that during your stakeholder analysis, you are thinking about who can help you evaluate the system. Uh, then you need to choose right people. When it comes to choosing the development team, uh, there is like with any other project. You want people who are known to deliver, people who are um, working on the systems that you decided that will be good for, for, for your domain, uh, which is one thing that is pretty new here. They need to be experienced in working with business. You don't want during your MVP, uh, your IT people and, and data people uh, to... They should be fluent in business, so to speak. Uh, you, on the other hand, all the, your, your governance team and, and the people from the business that you will cooperate with, uh, it's the, uh, it should be the people who understand what will be the value of this MVP. Uh, they should help you choose it. They should have skin in the game, so to speak, and they should help you evaluate it. Uh, then it comes setting up a minimal governance. Uh, we propose simple uh, steps of uh, defining uh, value statement, which is the final uh, priority for, for some actions. Decide on governance policy. I don't know. We will use open standards. Uh, it can be a policy which will be important or we will require this standard of describing the, the metadata. And uh, in the end, divide somehow, split responsibility between data product owners and your central governance body. Uh, then you have developing minimal data products. Uh, each of them should be focused on a single domain. When you have people who work with business, you will have it described with metadata. That's an idea. Should have clearly defined access ports. Uh, again, metadata needs to be um, well-defined before people start uh, using free text to describe everything. And of course, you need to expose the data. Pretty simple. Uh, in the end, um, you need some sort of platform. Uh, in our book, we describe Git-based minimal platform. It's just a place where you drop uh, your data products, which are CSVs. Uh, the important part is it's data mesh is not a technical solution. It's a socio-technological architecture and decentralization paradigm. Uh, so this is the content that we describe in, in, in our book. Uh, this is uh, the code. And uh, for if you would like to try the book, uh, this is the discount code, which you will be able to um, access and use using the link provided. Uh, 